Hello everybody, my name is Benny and welcome to The Fool's Apprentice. Today is another tarot chat and oh my gosh, I'm so lucky to get Dawn Michelle <laughs> from Boho Tarot on today. How are you doing, Dawn? Good, I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really excited for this interview. I, I love doing these interviews, so it's always very exciting for me. Uh, today's been a really, really good day. I was up at six o'clock this morning. Uh, trying oh, to wow. Ready. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. getting my home ready to sell. So it's I, it's been mm -hmm. a job. How are you this morning? That's a thing. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's still fairly early here. So, you know, just getting up and around and doing the thing, you know, West Coast people. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the challenge. I don't know if you face this challenge is when you have people on trying to get everybody from all different time zones to agree at the same uh -huh. time. Yeah, yeah, oh. that's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. The, we I, do things, and it's like nighttime for other people, and like the middle of the day for us. And it's it's even worse when you're dealing with people in like uh, other parts of the world because then it's like, okay, it's that's your middle of the night, so let me adjust. Yeah, I have to. Uh, I try to accommodate everybody. I'm going to be interviewing Sylvia uh, from Fairlight Tarot tomorrow. Fairlight Tarot. And so I have to do 8 p.m. because that's her morning. And so mm -hmm. I accommodate for everybody. Uh, I yes. just interviewed with Peggy and oh my gosh, that was a mess because I was interviewing two people that day, one on the East Coast, one on the Pacific Coast, I'm Central Time. It was a mess. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so tell us about a little bit about yourself, your, uh, you know, your TerraTube channel and anything else you'd like the viewers to know. Um, oh, geez, okay, that's a big question, right? Spot. <laughs> <laughs> um i am um, well obviously i have tarot channel and i've been doing that for about um i think i think it's five six years now it's five Honestly, years i went through your last five video years yeah. okay five years i'm glad somebody's keeping track because yeah. clearly i'm not um <laughs> it's gone through <laughs> it's gone through a pretty big revolution over the last few years i feel like mm -hmm. um because when i first came on when I first found Zero Tube, like in, in a general sense, I was literally just looking up to see if somebody had done a walkthrough of a deck I was thinking about buying. That was how I ended up here, which I think is most people's origin story. I've heard that a lot. Like I was just looking for a deck. I just wanted to see the pictures before I bought it. And I had been doing tarot in a vacuum for so many years. It's never it's never been a social thing ever it, until finding this community and everything. And so I, the first video I found was Kelly, The Truth and Story. Because uh, yeah. her walkthroughs are amazing. She's amazing. She was yeah. my introduction. She was my introduction to Tarot Tube. And I was like so excited. I was like, oh, look at all these people showing all these decks. And then I went down the rabbit hole and I was like, I want to make a video. So this is where I started because at the time I was working for other clients and doing things in alignment with the same sort of work. So mm -hmm. it's just a natural transition for me to go from doing that kind of stuff to just doing it for the Tarot channel and all of that. And um, it's been it's been a wild ride. I didn't like I didn't expect to actually still be here doing it. If I'm honest, like okay. I was just gonna make a few videos, right, and just show a few decks. And I was like, I know how to make pretty videos. <laughs> I'm a trained professional. <laughs> so that was where it ended up. And here we are, five years later, and this, it's, this, yeah, this, it's this been is amazing. now my job. <laughs> I know that. I, I think that yeah. is so cool that you can actually make this your full time job. Yeah. So in your find, so I went back and looked at your first video. I like to do that with everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna mm -hmm. say uh, very few people have a well, like lit, perfect sounding, beautiful looking first video. And your video looks like you've been doing it for quite some time. Now, yeah. if I remember correctly, you have some background. Uh, yeah. Do it and getting that. Yeah. Okay. I always, I always say I cheated. I cheated because I came into this having all of that background experience, I've been doing it for like 15 years. So I just took all of that and transferred it over to my channel. When I first started doing it, I was just slipping my stuff in amongst all the other things that I was working on for other people and things like that. So I kind of just treated myself like a client. Um, but it was, it was really just because I enjoyed that process. Like I enjoy making videos um i for me videos are, are an art form so it's you know why i do the tarot videos the way that i do is why i do gaming videos the way that i do and all of that so it was just another extension of, of art for me and i was able to do it with this thing that i was excited about and 
um, was really excited to see that other, like finding other people that were excited about tarot too, because that wasn't a thing that, like I knew a few, like a few people in my, you know, real life, I hate that term, but in person um, that used tarot, but they weren't like, it was just this kind of a side thing and, and all of that. So it was really exciting to come into the community and find that there's, there is this community here, which is amazing. Very cool. And so, yeah, I just, basically took all of that knowledge that I have and, you know, my design background, my marketing background. I was like, I'm just going to dump it into my channel and see what happens. Well, that's awesome though, that you have all those skills that you were able to utilize. I think a lot yeah. of us have a lot of different skills that we can translate into mm -hmm. a tarot tube. I don't know if we all know what our strengths are when we first start, but you definitely mm -hmm. uh, came across as somebody who knew what she was doing right off the bat. And oh, I will say yeah. <laughs> that I loved your first video, the idea of, you know, your foundation. That's very business-like. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was yeah. like, Dabby, and <laughs> talking about your decks, I thought was yeah. brilliant. Mine was like an intro to uh, like what my channel was going to be and why right. I'm doing it. Yeah. But I love that you started showing your decks right off the bat. Yeah, that was kind of like the the whole the whole point was I just wanted to show decks and really when I came into it, what I was searching for beyond the just seeing what decks look like before I bought them because then I discovered indie decks and that was a thing and there were decks on Amazon and I was like, oh my goodness, look <laughs> at all these decks. So, but once you step out of the, I just want to see all the pretty decks, what I wanted was to see how are people actually working with these decks? Because then at this point I was like, I want to expand my practice beyond what I'm already doing. And when you're doing tarot in a vacuum by yourself, you get stuck in that same way of doing things over and over again. So when I started making more and more videos and started becoming more active in the community, it was because I was actually looking for ways and inspiration to expand my tarot practice beyond what I'd been doing for the last 15 years. Okay. And because what I'd been doing was been very just wrote, just, you know, it was habitual at that point. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like I was really getting a ton out of it. And so one of the things I wanted to do with my channel was talk about how I actually use my decks. Like beyond the look at this pretty deck, like for I love first impressions, like don't get me wrong, right. I love first impressions. They're great because they give me a sense and you do tend to see what somebody thinks in their own. You see their influences come through mm -hmm. and what drives them as a tarot reader, which is really interesting and how we all read the cards, which is really cool. But I wanted to know how people actually use these things every day. Because everybody's like, I use my deck cards daily. And I'm like, but how? Yeah. What are you doing with them? So that was where I set out with my channel was I just want to show what I'm doing with them and my personal tarot practice because I'm not a professional tarot reader. That's not my, it's, I still not to this day, still not have no intentions of ever being a professional tarot reader. I don't read cards for other people. I read for myself and I create content that helps other people read for themselves in hopefully unique and creative ways. So but, I just had a thought with you said you're not a professional tarot reader. What, mm -hmm. what defines a professional tarot reader for you? For me, a professional tarot reader is somebody who reads cards for other people. They, ha they offer a service as okay. I'm going to read your cards. I think in this, in this day and age now, there's also such a thing as a professional tarot content maker. That's a different thing. That would be, I guess, the box that I would be sitting in because yeah. I don't read for others, but I create content that like, let's be honest, I sell, I have a membership, I write books, right? I'm selling my services just in a different way. Okay. So I think that for me, that's the distinction, but that's, I love that's that. Me. I think that, yeah, <laughs> I've never thought of that. So yeah, that's very, that is very clearly a, a, a distinction. So I want to go back. So in your first video, you talked about, you started in 2009. That was the first time that you started kind of playing with tarot decks or were you introduced to tarot at a different time earlier? Um, I think that was when I started like actively learning tarot. Um, I had been exposed to it through various um, different spiritual branches that I had, you know, dabbled with in my 20s. <laughs> trying to think, man, that was a while ago in my 20s. And um, so I'd seen tarot cards before more, though, I had seen Oracle more than anything. And yeah. so I think at that point around the 2009, that was when I got really introduced to tarot as its own structure, its own thing. And that was different than all the Oracle cards that I had seen that people I knew that were, you know, running around with. So that seemed to be more the thing, at least in the sphere that I was in. Again, not 
online because this was 2009. <laughs> so it was, it's, I was still doing a lot of things in real life. Right. And, um, that was my, the limit of my exposure. And it was very, very small. It's it very, very tight bubble. Okay. So, and yeah. so, and did, did you start learning when you ended up, buying your first deck did you end up using it because you said you used the same deck for a year which i think is amazing i actually no i used the same deck for like 10 years i only had one for like 10 years what yeah i know crazy right crazy right oh my um, god yeah when i when i first started learning so i a friend actually taught me how to read tarot and it was basically her family's sort of homespun, it's kind of this weird hybrid blend of Marseille Thoth and RWS all rolled into one. It's very numerological based and very elemental based. That's the, that's the bones of how I read tarot. And then should I choose, I layer, um, you know, Golden Dawn or I layer Marseille or whatever over the top of it. Um, but that's my bare bones. So that's how I was taught to read. And then I, ha I was just playing with her decks. Like I didn't actually own a deck at that point. I think it was just like a standard, like yellow box, Rider Waite Smith at the time. And, you know, we would talk about how, okay, this card looks like this, but if you strip that away, here's what's underneath. And that's how she was taught to read by her. I, I want to say her great aunt has been, has been a really long time, but I want to say her great aunt. And then she taught me. And so the idea was no matter what deck you pick up, you can always read it because mm. you have your bare, your bare bones. That's your structure. And then we layer over the top of that. And so I just played with her deck and then I got my first deck, which was the Legacy of the Divine. And I started picking up tarot books, but I only mm. had that deck for like, I it was like, I don't know, probably eight, 10 years maybe. And then I found like, I think at that point I was like, oh wait, there's decks on Amazon. And I found a, a steam, I think it was the steampunk tarot. I can't remember if I found that one. I got that one in the housewives tarot right around the same time. And those were the only three that I had for a really long time too. So it wasn't actually until I got to tarot tube mm. five years ago, <laughs> up until five years ago, I had three, I think three tarot. And I think I had one or two Oracle and that was it. Cause and I didn't now, know you better. And now you got hundreds. <laughs> I got hundreds now, yeah. <laughs> That's the rabbit hole. You have to excuse me. I have an, uh, allergies. I get this itch in my throat, so I'll cough from mm -hmm. time to time. So what was it about the tarot that kind of drew you in to want to spend? Cause when you, we start with tarot, you realize that you actually have to kind of spend a significant amount of time mm -hmm. learning these, these cards. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, for me, I think because I am like an, uh, an artist in a sense by trade and also I think just by nature, um, it was the idea of pictorial representation of the human journey that mm -hmm. really piqued my interest. And then I was like looking at it and learning more about it and then realizing that you could use these as a way to translate the stuff that's unverbalized within yourself and within your life path and your life journey. And you could use the cards to help you understand that. And then that, that was just the jumping off point for me. I was like, Oh wait, this can make me be figure out how to be a better person. And that's how I approach tarot. How can I be a better person today? Oh my God. I love that you say that because that is my huge purpose in using tarot. Uh, yeah. My, I, I pull cards every morning. Gen, um, half the time it's like, what is it that I need to like be, paying attention to but other times it's about yeah, yeah. how can i be a better therapist for the clients i'm working with today how can i be a better mm -hmm. son to my mother how can i be mm -hmm. you know a better friend today so i i will actually ask how can i connect with my you know a higher power or my spirituality in a much deeper mm -hmm. level today and so i love yeah. that you uh you do something similar yeah that's that's and I think because I only read for myself, my entire practice is based around how can I learn more about myself so that I could be a better version of me, and whether that's to be of service to others or of service to myself, those are equal in my practice. That's amazing. So, and have you noticed yeah. growth uh, since you've, I'm assuming you have since you're still doing Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Like huge growth. And, and I think one of the things, the funny thing is, so Lisa and I just yesterday I was having some conflict about 
a particular opportunity that's been presented to me. And I was like, I'm not sure if it's the right path for me. And like we had, we've been discussing it for a while now, but I, she was like, let's pull cards. So I was like, okay, cool. Let's pull cards. So Lisa and I both sat down, we pulled, we shuffled, we searched for the lover's card in both our decks. So we both did a reading and um, we found the three cards on top was one path and the three cards underneath was the other and that the lovers represented the choice. And so we did this reading and what I realized that this reading helped me do between her and I doing it together, pulling our own cards and then putting our two readings together to see what came out of that was that it just reaffirmed the thing that I already knew inside of me that I didn't want to admit. Mm. And I, I use tarot for that a lot where it's just like, I, it helps me get out of my own way essentially yeah. like get out of my own brain, get out of my own way. This is what I need to do. This is what I really think. This is how I really feel. And I use tarot a lot for also, um, cause I always say I'm not good with the squishy. That's not my forte. I'm not good at it. Like <laughs> we joke, I'm the person, if you want to stab somebody in the face, that's my, <laughs> that's my role. <laughs> and Lisa's the squishy one, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I use tarot a lot to help me understand my emotional landscape as well, because that's mm -hmm. something I personally struggle with. And so having the, the art, the, the pictorial language helps me to reflect and helps me to put that into a language that I can understand, which to me is amazing. Like it's there's, I've had so many breakthroughs and discoveries, just pulling out a, a random deck and it's always the right one, right? It's, mm -hmm. and, and it's always the right cards. And it just, it's so amazing. To it me. is magical. I feel, Still to this day, I'm like, how does this work? I just I know. don't understand, but it does. It, it does works. work. So, yeah. I, well, I just learned two things just talking to you, listening to you right now. One is I can use the lover's card as a choice card and pull cards from the side. So I will be keeping that in my back pocket. And then two, Perfect. when I, I never would have thought of this, doing a reading with somebody else that pulls their own cards and then combining the readings together. Mm -hmm. Have you done that before? Um, yeah, we've done that a few times. I, I've I've done it a few times with a few with a few friends. Lisa and I do it quite frequently when we have you know something that we're really unsure about. Because here's the thing: sometimes when you're pulling cards for yourself, it's real easy to overlook things because you just don't really want to see it. And when you have somebody that's kind of creating that mirror in a sense. So in this sense, like Lisa was my mirror. Her cards were a mirror. And the really interesting thing was we got several of the same cards ah. just in slightly different positions our readings were this really interesting mirror of um one side of my reading showed me like the kind of light side of it and her showed the dark and then it flip-flopped the other way it was so fascinating because it creates this a um, little bit of perspective and it's it's really great when you do it with um like with a friend somebody who knows you well mm -hmm. who like can step out and say hey you're not really being honest with what you're feeling around this right now and and, and it's amazing and the, the cards validate that but it creates this really interesting mirror effect which is really cool well just so you know i think that would be a great video for people to watch <laughs> it so, would be a great video I think, yeah because that's exactly what you were talking about showing people how to mm -hmm. read because i mm -hmm. think that would be great I, I i would be totally fascinated by that to see that god that, yeah. that's, that's amazing uh, yeah, it's, it's fun. That. Yeah, totally try it. It's really interesting. Um, the other thing that um, I've done with with some friends is that we'll we'll pull cards around like an energy just to get an energetic beat for a day and pull cards for each other. So because sometimes again, you can't see your own, you can't see your own force for the trees, right? Because you're right. in your own head and you're in your own thing. So you know, I'll pull for someone, they'll pull for me. And that's how we'll do a daily reading. It's not, okay. I don't pull cards for myself and it, it creates perspective. And it's really helpful when it's somebody who knows you, who knows what you're mm -hmm. going through, who knows, you know, your, your daily struggles and all that kind of stuff, because they can really help you to see where that understanding lies. And that's the big thing that I think this community is like, that was not a thing for me before. Like mm -hmm. I've been reading tarot for a long time. I never thought to read tarot with somebody else i've had my cards read professionally many mm -hmm. times <clears throat> but that's a different sort of energetic exchange than we're both pulling cards together and we're combining this reading that's very cool yeah so when you were starting to learn what were some of the biggest challenges that you dealt with in learning the tarot 
Um, I think the the biggest challenge that I had personally is probably a very me thing because of the way I was taught to read tarot, but it was disconnecting the system. Nope, sorry, the, tr the tradition from the structure. Okay. So for me, the way that I was taught to read is there's the structure of tarot, which is the 78 cards, which each have an elemental and a numerical value. Um, cause I was taught if the numbers don't matter, they wouldn't be numbered cards. Mm. They just have names. So therefore the numbers must matter because they have a name and a number. And then as you know, as a lot of us relate to the, um, minor arcana has elemental references as well for a lot of, a lot of us and how we read. So that's how I was taught to read. And the biggest thing that I, the biggest challenge I think that I had was reconciling things like the artwork that didn't always necessarily align i talk a lot about the three of swords oh I had grants on the three of swords yeah because the art in that card does not align with these the base structure of the card itself so if you break it down it's a three number and it's a sword which most of us associate with the suit of the mind mm -hmm. so for me three is a growth number the three of swords breaks down to growth of the mind and it's common keyword is heartbreak. And I've, I've, I've had many, many discussions with people about how that's valid too. And I totally agree. It is. It's just not how I read it. Um, because for me, heartbreak is a five of cups card. Yeah. That's emotional turmoil. And so for me, that was the biggest, the biggest thing because all the books that I read and when I first found tarot and started learning tarot, I mean, I bought Rachel Pollock's books. I bought Barbara Moore books. I mean, I cut my teeth on all of those. Um, and so it was really interesting and, and a bit of a challenge to look at that and go, okay, but the, the base structure that I was taught makes more sense to me. And so how can I layer that? And that's when I started to separate structure from tradition. Mm. Tradition is the golden dawn associations layered over the top of the tarot structure or Marseille layered over the top of the tarot structure or somebody's own crazy thing that they've made. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's so interesting nowadays because we're seeing such an expansion in that stepping outside of that box. And it's so cool. But that was the hardest thing because a lot of the books and stuff I was reading weren't really aligning with what I was taught, which is kind of more a little bit like kind of playing card divination, right? It's very mm -hmm. kind of bare bones. It doesn't have a specific keyword meaning because it depends on the context of the reading. So a three of swords in one position means something totally different oh. if it shows up somewhere else. Yeah. So how do you reconcile that? It's that we get that question a lot. It's, you know, I've got this, you know, bad card that shows up in a positive position. How do you reconcile that? And so I think when you like keywords are great. I use keywords all the time. But I think for me personally, putting a like stamping it with a keyword, the three of swords means heartbreak didn't make sense in my brain because it didn't always align with the context around what I was doing a reading on. And so that was the hardest thing for me. <laughs> yeah, to learn it. I'm with you on the three of swords in the eight of wands. I actually yeah. uh, got so fed up and complaining about it. I said, you know what? I made two videos, the eight of, uh, uh, one on the eight of wands. And the, I just did one on the three of swords. I went through all my decks, pulled out the ones that I liked. I'm like, okay, this is different. Mm -hmm. This is not a three swords in a heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I see, the three of swords more like if it's going to be anything that leads to heartache, it's going to be mental anguish. Mm -hmm. That's how I tend to see it. Uh, uh -huh. But you're right. It, it, it all depends on where it lies. It depends on where. Like the and I think, yeah. The intensity of it, you know, it, mm -hmm. I think it can be a warning more than it can be what's actually happening. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. I think that was, that was the hardest thing was, was learning that there is a structure it's very set. Like there is a very set number of cards and they fall in a very specific order. So there is this very rigid structure with tarot, but it's so fluid based on how you work with the cards. And that for me, it was, it was a struggle when I was learning, when I was trying to memorize meanings. And that's when my friend was like, you need to stop with the books and the memorizing meanings break it down and then you add your own emotional layer your own intellectual understanding of what that card means in your life what does it mean to you right now because what it means to me today is not what it's going to mean to me tomorrow in a different position in a different reading yes so, i will uh yes. I, have, 
I've had my, I had my first stalker card like uh, six months ago. It was the three of wands. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if I'm going to have a stalker card, that was not a bad one for me. And it was not a bad one. My yeah. life where I was kind of trying to plan things out and get things started. And um, mm -hmm. it really cleared up some things for me, but it didn't always mean that every single day. You know? Right. So yeah. I thought that, so that was a really kind of aha moment for me. So yeah, I really like so that. Cool. When yeah. did you start, how long after you started uh, learning the tarot did you feel, you know, I got this. You know, I don't have to reference anything. I don't have to kind of like sit and think really hard. It just kind of started flowing for you. Um. Oh, I, I mean, I think really, like if I'm being honest, it probably wasn't until like a few, I don't know, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. mm -mm maybe five, eight years ago or so, it was when I stopped trying to study the tarot. Like, I'm a nerd. I like homework. Like, oh, well, okay, I like homework in a, when it's something I'm interested in. I do not like home. If, if I'm not interested, my rebellious inner teenager shows up and is like, nope, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but if it's something I'm interested in, I like the homework. I want to dive in. I want to learn all the things. I want to you know, explore all that. But it wasn't until I stopped actually the study of tarot and started just using the tarot in a just everyday sense. And I think that's where it clicked for me um, because I used to just do readings when I had a question, when I had an issue, when I was undecided about something. It wasn't ever just, I never pulled daily cards just to pull daily cards. I didn't do reading. Like now I do all kinds of weird readings. I do transition readings. When I go from one project to another, I pull cards. It's a slight clearing thing. It helps me shift. I pull cards. If I'm feeling anxious, I'll shuffle and pull a card. I have certain decks for that kind of stuff. And it wasn't until I started incorporating, I think that kind of stuff when I stopped, when I got away from the study of tarot and started actually working with the tarot in me and for me in my brain those are two very different things i still study the tarot though i still study the tarot all the time i read books i learn what other people think and and all the new things that are coming out about different interpretations um but it's when i stopped thinking of it as something to study and started using it more as like a part of my daily life my daily practice my daily routine and that's when it started to flow okay i i I've not okay, so I've noticed that I will sit and want to study and I struggle with the idea of sitting. After grad school, I was done with sitting and formal. Mm -hmm. So that's been a challenge for me. But I do notice that the I I learn I am learning more by doing. So those daily morning pulls are very important for me because I still go yeah. to the guidebook with some, but I'm noticing I'm not having to go to the guidebook as often. Yeah. Oh, and it's because I think, I, I think you start picking it up the more you do it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Um, you said you don't read for other people. Have you ever read for anybody else? I mean, yeah, I I read I don't read for other people professionally. Okay. okay. <laughs> I have I have done. Yeah, I've I've read for all kinds of people all the time, but um I it's not my forte. I don't think I'm very good at it if I'm like being completely honest, which is why I haven't ever pursued it as like mm. a profession because I have I have a hard time getting out of my own way, even when I'm reading other people's cards. Um, that's why I, t I tend to like to teach people how to read for themselves, because I think that's me going, I'm not very good at this. So here, but let me show you how you can do it. And I think that'll be better. That's great. So, I, I, you know, yeah. it's really nice to, um, to know that, uh, you know, people who are very prominent in our tarot channel actually know where they fit really well in areas that maybe they don't fit as well uh because yeah, so that's I, not my thing <laughs> yeah because I, I, be, I, I believe that there probably are people out there who like like to believe that they're experts in everything that they do and some people mm -hmm. may but it's something mm -hmm. when it's something you're so passionate about i can think you know it can be very hard to see past your skill set and what you're really mm -hmm. really good at yeah uh, now when it comes to oracle cards because you mentioned Oracle cards. Mm -hmm. I love Oracle cards, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm, uh, I started with Oracle cards. I really like them a lot. They have kind of helped me build or develop my intuition, learn how to trust my intuition. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I feel I have really good intuition. Uh, I've used it my entire life. But like the Oracle cards really allowed me how to like, if I got stuck on something, they really helped me like to step back 
listen to my inner self, and then all of a sudden, trust what was coming, and the reading would turn out. And I find that that translates really well to tarot for me. Does Oracle mm -hmm. Cards work with you in any way that helped you with your tarot practice? Um, yeah, I, Oracle Cards are a big part of my tarot practice, actually. I, I It's very rare that I don't pull an Oracle into a reading. Okay. Um, because for me, they work, uh, there's less structure in an Oracle because it can be anything. And the thing I love about Oracle is that it is usually geared toward a particular theme, idea, process. And so that, I mean, okay, I do do things aesthetically. We know. I like it's people you just want to make it look pretty that is true i 100 percent admit i want to make it look pretty but i am more interested and it is more important that it reads well which is why i put so much time and effort into pairing my decks because i want to make sure that they hit all my boxes right they got to read well together they got to support each other but they do also have to look good because that's important yeah. to me i'm a designer well yeah. It's important. And it is part of my art. It's part of my practice. When I lay down a reading, that's art to me. And the cards and the decks that I use, that's all an art form. So I use Oracle all the time in that sense. And, and the thing that I love about it is it really helps to support, clarify readings. And what I tend to use it for most is it tends to be the anchor, actually, which is really interesting when you think about tarot as being more kind of weighty and it's got more structure and there's more to it. It's, there's more meat on the bone when it comes to a tarot deck. But for me, Oracle functions so well as an anchor to give me that succinct thing. This is what I need to be focusing on. This is what I need to be tapping into. And then I use the tarot to expand upon that and to get that deeper layer, that deeper meaning. Sometimes if I'm pulling and I need to know, like, what do I need to be focusing on? Pulling a tarot card actually doesn't get it for me a lot of the time. Because I'm like, well, okay, so I got you know, I don't know, the six of pentacles. Well, what is that actually, like, how do I root into the six of pentacles? I need something more basic. <laughs> I, like, break it down for me, right? I need something more basic. I need something that says like growth and it's a picture of a flower. Perfect. I can work with that because then I can take the tarot and I can dig deeper into growth where, growth how, how do I approach it? How do I want to explore it? How do I integrate it into my day? And that has become very fundamental to how I work with tarot because I rarely pull tarot on its own. Um, it's usually there's an oracle somewhere in there, if not several oracles, because they all have different little jobs and flavors. It's different flavors that I add yeah. to my reading. Yeah, every like, I actually do the same thing in the morning. I, my oracle card is what I'm supposed to be focusing on. And then the tarot tells me how to get there or how <laughs> what can get in the way of getting there um mm -hmm. i'm stuck on three cards i told myself like two weeks ago i'm going to start doing five two tarot's on the left two tarot's on the right with the oracle in the middle i don't know why i haven't done it yet but i have to start doing that because i got to expand yeah. practice but the, that's how, how i use the oracle cards as well they give me uh, either something really short and sweet that i need to focus on right now or something to mm -hmm. focus on throughout the whole day. And it always seems to be right on on what I need to like be paying mm -hmm. attention to. It's amazing. So it's always right on the money, yeah. And three cards, three card readings are my favorite. Like are that's they? the thing that I do most of the time is a three card reading because I get everything that I need and I tend to do it as a focus on. And then I tend to do, um, it tends to be the two tarot tend to be something that I need to um, step into and something that I need to leave behind in order to focus in on this. I don't actually assign a position to those. So I let the cards tell me which is which. Okay. Because that makes more sense in my brain. Like hmm. it, the, the cards know, right? They know whether this is something I need to be leaving behind or stepping into in order to embody that energy that's in that Oracle card for the day or the time or whatever. It is five is great too, though, because you can move outward, right? So like you have your Oracle in the center and then you have mm -hmm. your one tarot on each side and that's immediate. And then if you're looking at it in terms of an energetic throughout the day or something to be thinking about, that can be more of this, how you're going to start your day versus how you're going to end your day as you move further out. So that's fun too. That's amazing. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, that's where my brain went. <laughs> what usually happens with me is um, I, I have a standard. Oracle card in the middle, the left card tells me how can I achieve that goal. The right card tells me what can get in the way. Or I won't assign anything and I'll just let the cards speak to me and a message will come up and that's the message. And sometimes uh, the Oracle card isn't the dominant card 
in that reading for some reason. But I know that the reading that came up is the right one for me. Oh yeah. my God, I wanted to ask you, have you ever, because this happened to me not too long ago, where a reading is happening and somewhere deep down inside you're wanting to suppress it because you don't want to hear it and you catch yourself and you're like, nope, this is the message, let it come through. Has that happened to you? <laughs> Oh, all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I yeah, caught myself I'm... for the first time. It was really intriguing that my my mind wanted to suppress that. I thought that was, mm -hmm. I was more fascinated by that than the reading. The reading actually didn't impact me throughout the whole day compared to that moment where mm -hmm. I caught myself wanting not to re mm -hmm. have that reading happen the way it wanted to happen. Yeah, I, I, do, I have that happen quite a bit. And I'll do usually I'll do journaling around that, too, because mm -hmm. then I'm curious why. OK, why? Why did I have that reaction? Mm -hmm. I also notice that, like, if I have an instinct and I'm doing a reading and I'm like, I feel like I need to pull more cards. Sometimes that's a valid thing. Sometimes that's a valid thing because I'm not getting enough from what's on the table and I'll need another card or two for it to click. And it does. But sometimes I'm also doing that because I don't want to read the message that's on the table. Mm. So I'm trying to distract myself from it. So then it becomes of which one is it? Do I actually need more cards to understand this message? Or am I just using this a distraction? Because I don't like this message that I got. It, it poked something, right? It yeah. pushed a button. And so I'm going to pull more cards and be like, okay, well, I don't have to pay attention to that over here because now I have these cards that I can pay attention to. So I try to be aware when I, because I do have a tendency to, <laughs> I don't like this message. I don't want to hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> so. That, that's the only time that's really happened. But I also take that as a sign that I'm growing with the tarot. Because mm -hmm. I really thought about it through the whole day. And part of it, I think it's because I'm getting more in tune with the messages and the mm -hmm. what's coming up I'm and I'm becoming more sensitive that mm -hmm. I became sensitive to knowing that I was trying to push it. So I took it as a positive thing overall for me in that moment. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the really cool things about tarot is that if, if you use it in a self-reflective way, it really fosters self-awareness mm -hmm. and you become aware of your own patterns and tendencies that as, as you become aware of that, and, and it can start with little things like, oh, every time this card comes up, I have this reaction to it. And it can start with little things like that. And then you can kind of dig a little bit deeper and discover, why do I have that reaction to that card? There's something beyond the card itself that I'm reacting to. And then that can help you determine, you know, things that you need to be working on or where you need to expend some energy and some growth. And I use tarot a lot for that kind of stuff, too, of like, you know, poking at myself on purpose. <laughs> yeah. The Labanco Tarot did that to me with the lover's card and the, the, the death card. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with that deck? I am familiar with that deck. I haven't been able to get my hands on it, but it's, it's a gorgeous deck. Yeah. Those two cards were very, I had a visceral reaction to it. And I was like, nope, not mm -hmm. buying it. And then I was mm -hmm. thinking, there's something there. So there's I something on the there. hunt and I was fortunate. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, she had a, a, a last batch that I just got. I, I was one of the lucky ones that got it. And oh, nice. I look at those cards and they still bother me. And I'm like, they're there for a reason. Mm -hmm. I love this deck, but these two are there for a reason. Yeah. So eventually yeah. I'm going to bring that deck out and specifically work around those two cards. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that it's related to sex. I know that right off the bat. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's not a place where I want to look at that right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. I had the same experience with the Somnia Tarot. Did you? I yeah, the first time I saw it, I was like, no, this, no, I like, it's gorgeous photography. Like as an artist, I appreciate the photography, but I would have reactions to the cards. I was like, no, absolutely not. And then I did the same thing. I'm like, okay, there's a reason I'm having that reaction. So I bought the deck. I worked with it very um, heavily all through last year, along with um, wrapping it in with some Black Madonna work that I was doing at the time. Mm. And that deck, it's one of my favorites now because of all of that work I did with it. But there was something that I had to learn there. And that judgment card from that deck stalked me all last year. All yeah. last year. It showed up all the time. But I also had the same reaction to the Nicoletta Ciccoli tarot years ago. Oh. And I was like, nope, nope, can't do it. That's creepy. It's dolls. I don't like it. And then I was like, okay, there's some reason. There's something here. And I finally, after a few, and it took me a few years to come around on that one. And then I bought it. I did a bunch of deep work with it. And now it's it's a deck that I love and it has a very specific purpose in my collection and in my practice. But sometimes those decks that I think we have those responses to, there's something there that we can we can learn from, which is really cool. 
Yeah, I had one deck um, that I had an extremely visceral, really ugly for me reaction to yeah. it. Um, let me let me pull it up real quick. Um, the Phantom Tarot deck. The Phantom Tarot deck. I opened it up, and as soon as I touched it, like I dropped it, I had like this really unsettling feeling. It did not feel right. I rushed. Mm -hmm. I put it in a box, hid it in a corner. And didn't mm -hmm. look at it for three years, uh, two years, until a friend, um, a colleague reached out asking me if she was interested in tarot and did she have a suggestion. So I was like, yes, I do. I have this deck uh, and I have this mm -hmm. book I can give you. And I gave it to her and she loves it, loves it. That's but there was no way I could, I could get past that. There, uh, physically, yeah. it hit me spiritually really hard that I didn't like. Anything like that ever mm -hmm. happened to you? Um, I, I think that for me, it happens more in a, um, more in a tactile sense. Mm -hmm. I, there's, okay, unless it has holes, because I have that, like, the trip to whatever it is, like, I can't with holes. They creep me out. I will have a physical goosebumpy. Like, I have rehomed a lot of decks because I didn't realize that there was holes in the deck. Mm. And so that that kind of a thing I have, but now I'm I'm aware of that. So actually I actually didn't know I had that until tarot. And I'm like, why do I keep these decks keep creeping me out? And I, you know, you go down the rabbit hole and figure it out. And it's it's a it's a whole thing. Pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I outside of that, I can't do decks that have holes in them because that's the whole thing. Um, I. It's more of a tactile thing. There was a deck that um, I think it was called, it was based on the Night Circus book, which I absolutely loved. I was so excited for this deck to come out. Um, I think it was called the Phantom Wise and the texture mm -hmm. of the card stock and it sounded like corduroy and I just like, it was such a, a, a reaction to it. And, and I joked, I think I did some member videos around it. Cause I'm like, this deck hates me and I hate it. It's not like the readings are terrible. We don't get along. I'm mad every time I take it out. But I so love the book that I was like, I'm going to win. I'm going to beat this deck. Nope. I ended up rehoming it because I just, I, I like, I couldn't with the physical tactileness of it. And like, that's the thing that drives me crazy with some of the, the stuff that's produced now is like, these are physical tools. I got to be able to use it. If I can't shuffle it or if it feels weird in my hand, yeah. I'm not going to use it. But yeah, I had a whole thing with that deck where we did not like each other. That it didn't like so me. Funny. I didn't like it. Yeah, I thought that's funny. And then the, the, the readings are terrible. That's funny. They were terrible. It was like the deck was telling me, yeah, I don't like you either. So there. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. Okay. So you talked about going on to Terp to watching all these people and got getting inspired to do one and you did, you know, so mm -hmm. did you, you already have the, I'm assuming you had the equipment already since this was your business. Um, yeah, I mean, I had, I, I had the, um, the software. So okay. like all, all the software that I use is like, it's like professional level stuff. So mm -hmm. like I had all the software, I knew how to use all the software. And honestly, I think that's a big part of the, the way that my videos looked. Also, I like, I know about lighting and, mm -hmm. you know, things like that, aesthetics, how to frame things, that you know, all that kind of good stuff. As far as like the actual like equipment, my first, I don't know, however many videos I recorded on my phone. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just recorded on my phone and then I, you know, dumped it into my, and, and I did a lot of editing because, uh, well, I, like, I wasn't, I didn't have great stuff that I was working with. So I did a lot of editing to make things look better. I fixed, I color corrected, I fixed audio, I fixed lighting, things like that. Things that like, that's me falling back on my training. Cause that's my comfort zone. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was doing this scary thing, this really scary thing of being on camera myself. And for the first few years, I wasn't actually on, my face was not on camera for many, many years. It was just my hands because I was so used to being behind the scenes. Right. I was the person who made the stuff. I wasn't the person who presented this stuff. And so that was, it was really interesting going from doing this really, really scary thing of, of making videos and putting them out for just whoever to see. And so I would fall back on my training and I would hyper edit because that, that put me back in my comfort zone. It's like, okay, I can do this scary thing 
And as long as I just do it in a way that puts me back in that comfort zone, and then I can put that out there, right? So I started on my phone. And over the years, I've gradually like increased my, um, you know, my camera quality, I have a camera, I have a microphone, um, you know, I have a setup for overhead, I have a setup for front view, you know, things like that. Um, then Lisa and I started streaming a video game, and then I had to buy more stuff, and yeah. you know, <laughs> so <laughs> now I have all the all the little setup stuff. But I started on my phone, and I know a lot of people record on their phone. And phones nowadays, like the quality is great, They're amazing. Yeah. So I, honestly, like when it comes to making videos, a phone is great as long as you've got good lighting and people can hear you. Yes. That's the thing. You're, you're, you're showing something, whether it's yourself or your cards or whatever. So people want to be able to see what you're showing and they want to be able to hear you. And that those are the two quality control sort of things you got to look for. Other than that, the rest of the equipment is all icing on the cake, in my opinion. Okay. When it comes to your content, um, mm -hmm. do you have a, because now this is your business, I'm, I'm, I hate to assume, but I'm going to ask. I, I suspect that you have a set schedule of how often you do not only just your regular tarot channel, but your memberships as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. I, I've always had a publishing schedule, though. And the thing with the publishing schedule, it, and again, that's me falling back on my training because mm -hmm. I was doing the scary thing. And so if I just treated me like a client, then it wasn't a scary. So mm -hmm. I've always had a publishing schedule and like YouTube rewards consistency. And engagement is more important than view counts and subscribers. It really, really is. It's about the engagement and the more consistent you are on YouTube and the, the, the more the algorithm will favor you in a sense. Um, it's fickle, but like if you're going to try to play that game, for me, what it did was make sure that I was making space for this thing that I wanted to make space for in my life. So I slotted it into my schedule and I created a publishing schedule around it. My, I think my original schedule was because I was so excited and I was new and it was all this stuff was my, I think I did a uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, three videos a week for years. And then when I started introducing member stuff, I started having Weaver Wednesdays. So my member videos always have come out on Wednesdays. Sometimes I throw some extra ones in there, but there's always a video on Wednesday. And, um, now I've been playing with my schedule because I've got other things going on and my, you know, I've got, I've got a whole second channel that I'm doing and things like that. So I've had to make space for that, but a publishing schedule or a production schedule is really what it is. I have certain days, especially because I work from home and I have a family. So mm -hmm. I, and I, my kids are grown, but I still have one that lives at home and then their partner. <laughs> so I still have two young adults living in my house. And um, so I'm working around other people's schedules too, because my my space is just right off the main space. And so I have set days, like I have, Tuesday's a recording day for me. I record every Tuesday. It's recording whatever it is that I'm gonna need either for that week or the next week, depending on how far ahead I am. Okay. And then I have editing days. So you'll record multiple videos on Tuesdays? Yeah, I've learned though that for me, like three is pushing it. That's my yeah. max. Two is my comfort zone. Yeah. So usually what I do on Tuesdays is I record my one video that's going out publicly and I record my member video. And that's my every Tuesday. Every Wednesday is my editing day. And I try to run a week ahead except for member videos. Member videos are always in the moment. So it's because there's no telling what I got going on. So I will edit my member video very, very lightly on Tuesdays so that it can go up on Wednesdays, but those are for the most part unedited. It's just me being me. Um, but yeah, I have Tuesdays are recording days. Wednesdays are editing days. Um, and, and I have like Mondays and Fridays because everybody is home on Mondays and everybody works from home on Mondays and Fridays. Those are like my admin days. Those are when I catch up with comments and things like that. And I had to create a schedule because I'm also a squirrel. So if I don't have a schedule, I will go off. I lose whole days doing projects. It's been really bad with the game stuff because making game videos is so much fun. It's such a creative, a weird, creative little outlet. But I will lose whole days to that if I don't like keep to a schedule. <laughs> so now I have now that's a day that's built into my schedule. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty loose 
So um, I'd like to do three a week still. I like to do, I, I have a series called Hashtag Saturdays where I pull hashtags like recent ones to ones like five years ago, eight years yeah. ago and reintroduce yeah. them. Love doing those. Those are so much fun to me because I get to mm -hmm. play with all my decks and I get to see what people are doing and I get to see new decks. So that's a lot of fun. Then I started this tarot chat series. And so I like to post those on, I think I do those on Thursdays now. And then my free one is Tuesdays, unless mm -hmm. I end up doing me and Kelsey from, um, oh my God. I cannot believe her name slipped my mind. It'll come to me. So Kelsey and I are it's doing cozy, the cozy channel, not, not cozy. No, that, that's, that's, that's Tara. cozy with Tara. And then, yeah, uh, that's cozy with Tara. It's, it's still cozy too. It's hers. It's cozy too. She's going to kill me. <laughs> I know. I'm going to look it up. I got to get it right or she will kill me. I can't believe that. That's ridiculous. That is the thing about me. I'm so bad with names. Huggy Taro. How can I forget yeah. Huggy Taro? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, so we're, do, we're studying the Ehrenberg Taro. And I, uh, so on weeks that it's my week, I post it on Tuesdays, the following Tuesday. It's a, it's a new video. Um, mm -hmm. Now, when you decide on your content, because your content, you said, has changed from when you first started. Mm -hmm. yeah. How 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 is your channel different today compared to when you first started? Um, well, I mean, I think part of it is just as you are naturally, you know, making content for so long. There's like there's only so many things to talk about, right? There's only so many times you can discuss a, t a topic or whatever. And so, I think that when I first started, I talked a lot about um, decks and specific decks that I was using and how I was working with them and things like that. And it was very, I feel like my channel, I'd have, I'd, I actually haven't gone back and looked at anything I've done for years. I don't rewatch my videos. So um, once they're out, they're done. It's out of my brain and it's out into the ether and I don't ever look at them again. But um, I feel like when I started, I was talking more about decks because I was so excited about all these new decks. Mm -hmm. I'd never seen so many decks. And then, um, then I went through that period of the deck overwhelm and the burnout and like that also happens when you're a content creator pushing content that often. Right. So making, you know, three to four videos a week is a lot and you eventually will feel like, or at least I did. I've said all this before. I feel like I'm repeating myself at this point. Right. And yeah. I say that all the time to my members. I feel like we've had this discussion. I feel like I've said this before. Um, but I, I, as things have gone on and my personal, because my channel is, is a reflection of my practice. So what's happened behind the scenes is my practice has been shifting. It went from all the decks to, okay, the, well, let's, what are we going to do with all these decks now? Right. Let's find a way to use them all. And then, so then I started doing the monthly medicine. We did that for two years, which was great because I really wanted to start thematically working with um, certain energies and, um, different and different types of cards. So each month had a theme like we did a like an ebb and flow month and we did a um, um, I don't know we've done it was it was 24 months of different themes, right? Yeah. Trying to remember all of them now and then that was me making my practice um, You know, grow into these different aspects where I would have a month where I would really focus on a particular theme and then we did the monthly medicine around that and then you know everybody else participated too in my membership and so that was me taking that and and I was working very seasonally at the time I still work very seasonally but I was intentionally working seasonally at the mm -hmm. time so I wanted to pull in more seasonal energy I wanted to pull in the different themes to explore different things we had one month where we used tarot for visualization and creating inner temples which was really fun which was a practice that I used to do in my 20s and had abandoned and brought back and then now we've gone into I, I've realized that oh I can in integrate tarot into other interests of my life so tarot and gaming that's been the whole new thing um, so I've been a gamer my whole life too. And I'm like, oh, what if I took these two things, my two favorite things in the world and I put them together. And like now Lisa and I, we have a game where we literally pull cards to determine our actions in our game now. Oh, so very cool. It to a whole next level. It makes that is awesome. Game. Like she created this whole system around this, this suit means this. And so like, you have to do what is on the card. We have to go through and, and you have to be able to justify your action 
So it's really interesting because it, it it's it's changed the whole the whole game changed the it got harder but it changed the whole game. But we were looking at ways of how can we take this thing that we love over here and put it with this thing we love over here. And now we're doing like her and I are working on developing a dice divination system and things like that. So because we are both little dice goblins and we love dice as much as we love tarot cards. Oh my god, I put it up. Okay, because I'm moving. I had to box all my tarot decks. Uh, I had every intention to do your the, the the game journaling with the dice. I got me such I got me the most beautiful dice. I'm gonna have to share pictures of it to you. Like oh, dice, definitely like dice. But I'm excited. Uh, it's a Dungeons and Dragons set of dice. There's like five, six, seven mm -hmm. dice. It's white, mm -hmm. heavy metal with uh, the silver outlining and numbers. Oh my god! It, I just. I just love, I, I'm actually starting to like incorporate them in my readings little by little. Um, mm -hmm. I still don't know what I'm really doing, but you have a video on how to use uh, the dice with the, the tarot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, yeah, and we do that with in my membership this year, we're doing the narrative journey. So I basically, it's, I, I, I always say it's not DD, but it's DD inspired. Yeah. So it's narrative journey, and we use, um, we use dice in that, and there's it's got the storytelling element. We've got the dice, we've got the cards. It is still all founded in personal growth. That's the undercurrent. But now we're looking at um, creating this this monthly practice. Basically, this we're doing a, it's an overarching quest for the yeah. whole year. But each month breaks down into like little yeah. mini quests that we do, and we do side quests and things like that, and do some live events and and things of that nature. But again, that was me going. I love playing with my cards. I want to play with my cards more. I also love dice and I also love D and D. So how can I put all that together? And that was where the fellowship was born because that's where my practice has moved through. Because I feel like I've been going through this ebb and flow of of things, and a lot of what I do is founded in play. It really is because this is one of the areas of my life where I can play. I can, you know, be expressive with it and I can be creative with it. And that's, I think the really cool thing about tarot is that it's, it's has the ability to be so many things. I mean, it, it is deep, serious work too. It's very deep esoteric layer to the tarot as well. And that's definitely a rabbit hole I've gone down. Um, but also at this point in my, pro I've done all that. I've done all that. So now I'm like, I just want to play with my cards, man. I just want to have fun. So, but I'm still every day doing the personal growth stuff because that's the foundation of my practice. How can I be a better me today? That's yeah. the foundation of it. And I think that's one of the secrets uh, that I'm also learning is how to make the work that you do because creating videos is work, you know, doing all what we're doing is work. One of the Not things, um, so my channel's two things. Well, it mainly started as, hey, follow me to see how I learned the tarot because I don't know what I'm doing and I'm brand new. Uh, Which is and great. I'm doing, and, that's, and I'm still doing that with uh, like doing this uh, deck study. It's showing how I'm, I'm learning it. And I'm finding out that there are certain things I like doing and learning it and there are other things I don't like in, in learning it. Mm -hmm. Like one of the reasons I ended up uh, finding your channel is because of your journaling that you do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I want to do that. Turns out, Journaling is not my thing, <laughs> mm -hmm. but totally I, valid. You know, totally valid. <laughs> writing helps me digest the information a little better. So I've simplified what journaling look like, looks like for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But one of the things that, I, so that part is still there. The other part is I love talking to people. I am a people person. You know, mm -hmm. I like getting to know people and why they do what they do. It's one of the reasons I'm a therapist because I get to engage and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And then. The idea is, I had this idea of, like, I really would like to know more about this person. And then all of a sudden, the idea of doing a tarot check came. And I loved, these are very exciting for me. Love them. Yeah. So being able to incorporate those two things, um, make does mm -hmm. it make this feel like work at all? So it sounds like that's yeah. exactly what's happened with you. Yeah, it's, it's there's, I hit, I hit a wall at, at, one point and lisa and i have talked about it because we hit it at around the same time which was interesting uh, and, yeah and we've, we've we've done a lot of uh, we've had a lot of chats about it you know we've, we've talked about that's why we went full on into the gaming because we just need we needed something to shift and um 
when we hit that wall and after you've been doing it for so long and you do start feeling like I'm saying the same things over and over again, like I felt like I, I was constantly saying that to my members. I feel like I feel like I've said this before. Like I feel like we're just, I'm just repeating myself and I like jokingly say, I don't want to listen to myself anymore. I don't know why you all want to listen to me because I don't want to listen to me anymore. But it was I was trying to find I needed something to make to re-spark that initial joy <laughs> and the fun and the play aspect of it. And here's the thing for me, when I first started getting new decks was fun. Yeah. That was play. There is mm. nothing more fun than getting a new deck, opening it up. I mean, it's a thing I do with my members now. I save all my decks and we open them together in my coffee and cards. And it's just, it's just a play. It's just a hall play. But when I first started, that was the play part. That was the fun part. Even trying to figure out how to now I have all these decks, how to incorporate them into my practice in interesting and new ways. Um, that was fun, too. But I'm at this point in my in my particular practice and in my life where I don't really want to mass a, accumulate a bunch more decks. I'm like, I've got what I need and I still bring decks in. I still buy decks, not to the mass volume that I did before. Um, because it was so new and there were so many exciting things. But now I'm looking at how do I play with the decks that I already have? How do I rediscover that joy of working with them? And for me to do that was to wrap it in and gamify it, which is kind of what I did, which is so funny to me when people are like, you can't gamify the tarot. That's where it started. Yes, I absolutely can gamify the tarot. <laughs> that's, its, that's its roots. I'm just taking it back to its roots and I'm adding a nerdy layer to it. <laughs> that's great. So yeah. I'm curious, how, how did you come up with your channel name, Boho Tarot? Well, that was the Boho Tarot was the original channel name. Um, and it was it was funny because it was really just a joke. Was like because my yeah, because my kid was like, um, I called me like Boho Mom or something like that. I don't even remember what it was, but it, it came out of a joke. And I was like, oh, Boho Tarot, fine. Like because as she was always used to say, you know, make fun of the boho look in whatever. Okay. You know, teenager back in the day, teenager. Yeah. Right. So it came out of a joke because I didn't actually think this was going to be a thing. I didn't think I was going to do this for a long period of time. I was just playing. And then I, I kept the boho check. Cause then it's so then I'm like, okay, well I'm a marketer. I built a brand. Yes. So now I'm like, Oh, my marketing brain kicks in, which I, I tried not to <clears throat> let it. Like I try to keep that separate from my channel nowadays, but when I first started, that was where I, I, that was the work I was doing. That was where I was, you know, where I spent most of my time was in that brain, that mindset. So I was like, okay, I can't rebrand now because I'm known as this. Cause I changed the background of my table and people flipped out. And I was Are like, you talking about the, the white? The when I went from the white. <laughs> yes. I remember that because yeah. the comments were like, oh my God, I didn't know it was uh, this yeah. plywood thing. And it, like it everybody a, just. Yeah, yeah, it was a whole, and I was like, I was like, oh no, oh no, I can't, I can't change anything now. I've branded that. But the thing is, is that that came out of a joke and it wasn't really me. It's not mm -hmm. really who I am. It's not really, it's not even really that much of like an aesthetic <laughs> that I love or anything. So at that point, it's like two, three years in, I think it was three years in where I was like, I really just need to like put my name on it. Well, and, and I've always just been Don Michelle in this space. And, but that's, that was already taken. It's not a channel that's being used, which was unfortunate, but it was already taken. So I was like, well, I'll just do Don Michelle Tarot. And that's where it ended up. And then, then I've been like, maybe I should change. Cause that, this was one of the conversations Lisa and I had, I was like, maybe I should change it again because I, I want to expand. And that's the thing is I didn't, I felt like every time I put like Boho Tarot felt too <laughs> limiting. It, it, it pigeon in my designer brain, it pigeonholed me into an aesthetic that I didn't necessarily mm. want to live in. So I expanded it and go, okay, this is me. This is me and my tarot practice. So here's my name with tarot. And now I'm looking at that going, okay, but I want to expand further. So, you know, do I need to make some change around that? I did the exact same thing with my other channel. That thing has had like five different names. And most recently I went back to my OG gamer tag because that felt in alignment with like, I don't know, like 2003 me or whatever gamer tag. So, but I, I think that it was a reflection that my, it's interesting because my channel name is kind of a reflection of my whole practice on the whole. 
not that my practice started out as a joke, but it started out as a, oh, I can make a video. Nothing serious. I can make a video. Just let, me, let me just show this deck. So like, I know how to do that, right? So I did. And then it's progressed into now it's me and it's a part of me. And then when I added the membership, that's even more me because like I'm a hot mess with my members a lot of the time. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what I'm doing today, y'all, but here I am. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm your member and you will say, okay, well, I don't know what we're going to talk about, but we're going to talk about something. <laughs> we're going to talk about something today because there's always something going on, right? But I think that's important to share the real side of things like, yeah, because there's this perception that is particularly when you look at somebody who has a channel that is very curated, that they have all their ducks in a row all the time. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true for most people, because what you see is only a small sliver of what that person yes. allows you to see. Right. Yes. Yes. So, that's one of the things I love about having a member space is that you get to see the other side of things. You get to see this is this is the unpolished version. This is the real the real me and how I go about things and I'll do random weird things with my cards and like this is what we're gonna do today because that sounds like fun. Um, it's more it allows you to be more personal to get more personal in that space. But my whole channel I think has been a reflection of that progression from me approaching this as like this is just this fun little thing but i'm going to throw it in here like i'm a client to now here's where i am where it's really weird because i've like backtracked i don't treat it like a business anymore in terms of how i make my content i don't make whatever's i don't make the content that's generates the most views right like that's not my goal it's what do i want to say today i'm not doing whatever the hottest latest greatest thing is if it's not something that I want to talk about, yeah. When um, the, the the views that I get that I get good views are like tarot flip throughs and stuff, but I haven't done one in a while because I'm doing stuff I really like to do because those are fun. And I think that's I, more important. Yeah, and then I've also left little flubs in now, like I mispronounce mm -hmm. words. Okay, whatever. Before I was very like I can't mispronounce a word. I have bloopers on some of my videos because. Which you are know, great, yeah. Really funny, and some of them are like, like I'm over myself, and uh, but uh -huh. it shows a part of, of a personality part because yeah, um, branding. I never necessarily thought of branding, but I've thought about how do I want to present myself in this space. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I? How does my channel name represent like what I do? And when mm -hmm. I got the Fool's Apprentice for me, that really talked about somebody who's learning uh, mm -hmm. and, and, Absolutely. Until talk, yeah. and until we talk now, it's actually a channel name that will stand the test of time, I think, because mm -hmm. you're always learning. I don't, I don't think it's a, a, Never a practice learning, that yeah. you can say, I'm done. I've learned everything I need to learn because uh, mm -hmm. it's so nuanced. Oh yeah. I learn something new every day, every day. I learn something new with the, with the cards, which is amazing. And then um, my background, I usually have little lights and stuff, but my background has changed. I have colors, I have lights. Uh, now I like, cause I saw videos, I would watch videos to get an idea of what I liked and what I didn't like visually. So I'd watch videos on mute cause I wanted to see mm -hmm. what aesthetically do I like? And then I found what I liked that were similar. So that's how I ended up with what I got. But mm -hmm. I'm a guy that gets bored really easy. So what do I do when I get bored? <laughs> <laughs> same not a clue but something will happen so i got these lights that change colors so i'm like oh i uh -huh. can change the colors so that's something perfect i mean that's better than what i do where i'm like i'm gonna yank everything off my shelves throw them <laughs> on the floor in a big pile and then go oh my goodness what did i just do now i gotta oh. put it all back <laughs> oh man um so you've created some decks what inspired uh you to start creating your decks um, mo mostly it was just because it was a deck that I wanted to, to personally use. So um, I think the the Sacred Threads Oracle, I haven't, I haven't done a tarot yet. I have like five tarots in the works. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I haven't actually made a tarot yet. Like that's out. Um, all of the decks that I've made are I've made because they fill some sort of purpose in my practice. So my Sacred Threads Oracle is I wanted a deck that represented all of the things that were personally significant to me in my spiritual practice. So I could have that in a representation in deck form. So I drew all of those. And that was also it was interesting because I had 
like I'm a traditional artist, a digital artist, but I had never used, um, I had never used Procreate at that point. And I was like, well, I have an iPad. Everybody uses Procreate. Like all artists use Procreate. I should learn Procreate. So I, I used Procreate and my deck to teach me how to, how to draw on Procreate, right? That was, that was my, my thing I did. Um, I did the same thing when I, so I have a Lenormand deck. When I sat out to learn Lenormand, I made a deck as a learning tool oh, because kind of I'm cool. an artist. That's how I, that's how I create connections in my brain. And that's how I learn things. So when I was learning Lenormand, I created the rusted Lenormand, which was just basically my personal representation of the Lenormand as I was learning it. And that's how I learned it. <clears throat> Um, so I had my that one. And then the other one is just my weird collage deck that I just made fun collage oracles for fun. There's a whole series on my channel where I made them on, on camera and it was just a fun, creative, artistic project. I still make collage cards. I still have a ton of them. I can do a whole nother deck or two now at this point that I need to get around to. But most of the time it's because I'm I'm creating a deck because I'm creating something this sounds bad, but something for me, something that's missing in my personal tarot practice. And then it turns out like it, sometimes it resonates with other people. So I'm like, cool, here, you can have one too. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really like looking to be like, you know, some <laughs> prolific deck creator. I don't think, I don't have the attention span for that. Also my art changes and bounces around too much. I mean, I am working on, I'm spending this whole year doing this um, art project where I am trying to learn how to draw people better. Okay. And um, because there is a deck that I want to create and I want to be able to draw it myself. So I have to learn how to draw people better. So um, my my kid who's an art art major in college at the time was it, it is still an art art major in college um, was like, hey, you should try this thing where you pick a model and you redraw them time and time and time again, because then you start focusing on little details and you get really good at drawing those little details. So anyway, I picked a model and I've been redrawing that same character all year, all year long. And I, I don't even know how many art pieces I have now of it. Occasionally I post the ones that I'm like, huh, this isn't half bad. I'll post it on like my Instagram or something. Um, they show up in my, in my journals too. Cause if I'll usually I'll print off whatever the <clears throat> latest one I finished and I'll put it in my journal but it's really because there's something that I feel is missing in my personal practice so I'm that's just what I do I'm like I, I don't have this thing it doesn't exist I'm gonna make it and the same with like the, the tarot adventure that we're doing this doesn't exist I want it to exist so I'm just gonna make well, it. well I think that's great because I think a lot of people find something missing and all they do is just pout or complain or just push it aside until they're annoyed with because they don't have it again. And the fact that you're actually doing something, I think is amazing. No, oh, thank you. It's just, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun to create. Like I, I am an artist. I like to draw, um, you know, creating a, a deck or, or an Oracle or a tarot, like that gives me a structure to work in, which is really nice. There's a set number of pieces, so to speak. I mean, Oracle's a little bit more fluid, but, um, it's there was like I've got a, a a crystal skull oracle that I I just need to put keyword. It's done. Uh, yes, you had it on your channel. Yeah, it's done. I just need to actually like finish it, put the keywords on it, and like get it printed. But oh, it's, I thought you were talking about another one. <clears throat> no, it's the the um I don't know that I've I think I've shown it in member space, but okay, it's maybe little okay. deck. It, yeah. So I, I love little crystal skulls. I have them everywhere. Yes. I could not find a crystal skull oracle that I liked that did the thing that I wanted to do. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to make one because this is clearly a thing I need in my life. So, <laughs> and that that's how I go about like most of like 90% of what I do. There's, I feel like there's something that's needs to be said or, or done. And so I guess I'm just going to be the one that does that. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it just happens. Now, if I remember correctly, the Llewellyn is your favorite deck? Um, yeah, it's it's like one of my, I think, longest. I don't know if I'd necessarily call it my favorite deck, but it's like my longest term deck that I feel like that was one of the first decks that I made a really personal connection to. Um, it was really interesting because when Lisa and I were doing the mirrored reading, she pulled 
um, the unicorn's journey tarot, of course, so that's, that's her, that's her mm -hmm. deck. And I was like, Oh, what am I going to pull? Because I needed to pull my deck. And I had a brief thought of the Llewellyn, but I'm like, I, that feels like five years ago, me. So I pulled the dreaming way. I'm like, this feels like right now me. So this is the deck that I'm going to use. Um, so I think it changes. I do love my Llewellyn. It's still a special deck. I like it's, it still sits in its special box and I still get it out and play with it. But I don't know that there's any one particular deck that I really like associate with. As your favorite? As my favorite, yeah. That's interesting. You're the first person that I've talked to that doesn't have like a favorite deck. This is my favorite deck. Yeah. Okay. I'm such a squirrel. I like so many different things. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very moody tarot reader. So <laughs> the deck that I love right this five minutes is the deck that's mirroring back the mood I'm in. Okay. That's what, the, that's what deck do you find thing. aesthetically the most pleasing to look at? Like your artist um, self like really loves looking at it. Oh gosh, so many of them. <laughs> um, my artist, my artist self really likes the dreaming way. Yeah, um, I think that's probably one where I go back to because it's very clean. Um, there's, it's very black and white with a lot of pop of green color, which I really, really like. Um, I also really like the um, Aphidia Rosa that decks by that creator. I have all of them because it's very, it, this has like this sketchy hand drawn doodly thing, which is also very much my aesthetic because I doodle all over everything. Like I was a kid in school that I wasn't taking notes. I was doodling pictures in my, in my notebook. And I love the aesthetics of, of that deck, that series too, because it's very clean, but it's like sketchy doodly. And there's, I love white space. White's at, like, I'm constantly telling my kid who's, you know, in art school, white space is your friend. White space is always going to be your friend. <laughs> like, don't do it dirty. It's good. <laughs> so, uh, I, I like I like that kind of aesthetic. I think is what I tend to be drawn to. But I, I mean, I have so many beautiful decks. So I, many beautiful I, decks. I have a lot of beautiful decks too. Um, but I'll tell you right now, my favorite go to deck is the Spoiler Tarot. I I didn't re I like the Spoiler Teller and I wanted it, but I did not know how much I was going to adore that deck until I yeah. I I don't like the card suck at all, at all. Yeah. But the images and the energy that I get from it is just so, I don't know, it just draws me in. And I love using it when Olga speaks. Do you know the mm -hmm. Rolko deck? Yeah, yeah. Those two it, together, yeah. they're a powerhouse. Like, I love Are they? them. Yeah. Yes. Very yeah. good. I have to stop using, I have to tell myself, stop using them. Because then, you know, yeah. I'll only use those two compared to all these other decks that I want to end up using. Yeah, Any, uh, I love my Twilia too. Do you use it very it's often? My, I do, and it's I, I call it my miracle deck because I hunted it down for because it's out of print, right? Mm -hmm. And I hunted it and hunted it and hunted it and couldn't find it. I finally found somebody that was willing to sell it to me, and it disappeared in the mail. And I was like, oh, it's just gone. It's just gone. Like I offered to like, uh, uh, like she offered me back. She's like, I'll give you back your money. I'm like, no, it's not your fault. Like just it's it's gone to the ether, whatever. Two months later it arrived and we're not talking like she was in the States. So it wasn't like a, it was traveling over. I don't know where it went. It disappeared for two months and it just magically reappeared. And I was like, <clears throat> that would be the one deck that I would never, ever get rid of. Yeah. Same here. I will tell you that right now I'm waiting for the fairy tale tarot by Baba studios. I can't believe mm -hmm. what to get it. UPS has it. And I was supposed to be delivered two days ago. And now I have a message that there'll be an update when they have a delivery date for me. And I'm like mm -hmm. mortified. I am so mm -hmm. scared that it's lost in the mail and it took me forever to get this deck. <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll be your miracle deck. It'll just show up. Oh, I hope so. Cause it, it's got me a little stressed out. Well, a little stressed. Yeah. I, I, it's interesting what I stress out over and I'm not as stressed out about that as I think mm -hmm. I normally would. Um, mm -hmm. Any particular cards? Uh, do you have a favorite card in the deck? Um, I well, I mean, the the Queen of Pentacles is my significator card, so she's probably like up there in my favorite. But you know, I love the Tower card. I love you, the Tower card. I love when the Tower comes up. I'm like, yeah, things are gonna get shooken up. Like, let's do this. I get real excited when the Tower comes up. I um, I'm do I'm gonna be doing a new series on uh that I, that you were uh you you've 
uh, graciously said you'd come on to uh, my one card tarot deck study. Mm-hmm. And someone <laughs> wanted the tarot card because it's their favorite card. And then they said, that might sound a little weird. And I'm like, no, that doesn't sound weird at all. My favorite card is the Five of Pentacles. So they, I yeah. totally get why, you know, uh, any these bad cards would uh, be somebody. Yeah. Favorite. Uh, they have such significant yeah. meaning for one reason or another. They do. Yeah. I really like the devil, too, when do the you? devil shows up. Mm-hmm. I, I, the devil is one of the few cards that I understood very quickly because I lived at that tarot deck for a year or that tarot card for a year. Mm-hmm. So I, mm-hmm. I, I, I totally get that, uh, that card very easily. I don't necessarily yeah. like seeing it, but because <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's just for me, it's like it feels a card that's very foreboding. Like it, mm-hmm. it's this dark cloud you know, that mm-hmm. you have to walk through. It's a cloud, but you have to walk through it. So, yeah. um, but the tower card, yeah, I could see, there's several people yeah. so far that have mentioned that they like that card that much. Yeah, um, I do, I love the tower card. I like shake up energy. And I think it makes my squirrel brain happy. <laughs> now, when it comes to um, your journaling, how did you get into journaling? Uh, Cause that's a really big part of your practice. It seems it is a really big part of my practice. Yeah, I've I've always been a journaler. Um, I've always had like, you know, sketchbooks and I I didn't really realize like back in the day, like, you know, my teen years, my 20s, um, my sketchbooks were always a combination of sort of uh, art and writing and like bad poetry and journaling. And, you know, it was just a hodgepodge of whatever. And then I started to realize as I got older that um, part of that ex- experience of drawing and, and um, journaling and writing in that way was helping me to work through things, was helping me to understand things. And because I am, because I'm more artistically driven, art is a lot of times how I express myself. So like I posted on, and it's in one of my journals too, that one of the things that I realized just even recently, so I'm 45 years old. I just figured this out. Okay, so I was doing the study of the drawing the same character over and over again, right? And I realized at one point, I think it was like a month or two, I'm drawing my feelings with his face. That is what I'm doing. I'm artistically expressing what it is that I am feeling using this particular character's face. And it was really interesting because I did a drawing and I had shown it to a few friends and I was like, oh, here's my latest piece that I did. And everybody saw something different in it, which was fascinating, absolutely fascinating that the emotional undercurrent that each person saw. And then I, that's what tipped me off to realize, oh, but this was what I meant. This was my emotional undercurrent that just came through. And so journaling for me is just an extension of that. It's when I, and, and I think that's why it's, it's always incorporating art and writing and all of that, because those are all ways that I express myself. And when I can't express myself with words, in writing, I express myself with art. And I tend to do that, like, I think I posted it, like, on my Instagram or something. I was like, I can't do the squishy a lot. I can't verbalize the squishy a lot, but I can draw it. And that's how I express it. And journaling for me is a part of that. So even if there's no words on the page, everything that's on there, it seems really haphazard. And if anybody watches my journaling, let's take a sticker here. Let's take a sticker there, right? We're going to do a doodle over here. But when <laughs> I stop and I look back at it, I'm like, oh, I, I see what I was expressing in that. Mm. It's, it's just another form of me processing. It's how I process through yeah. art and writing and words. And tarot is a great tool for processing. So it, they just all kind of naturally come together. And I like the creative. I like the artistic. I do have journals where I just write and they're they're a hot mess. I call them my trash journals, which is a terrible thing to say, but that's what they're called. They're my trash journals because I don't care what they look like. It's just, you know, whatever writing in the moment. But a lot of times that's how I process. And that really helped me journaling with the tarot was what helped me to understand my own personal connection to each of those cards. Because it's fine to know what, you know, some... 18th century Catholic mystic thought about the card, but what do I think about it? How does it relate to me in my life? Because I'm trying to use it to understand my situation or my emotional landscape. I can't use his definition. I love I love that. Where I am. Yeah. It just doesn't work for me. It's not 
we're not speaking the same language, me and him, right? So, and even me and Pixie, we're not speaking the same language. So journaling for me was a way for me to take those images that were so um, like ingrained in, and I think the human consciousness, right? These are archetypal images. And it was a way for me to take that really, really big thing and break it down into what do I think and feel and how does it affect me, right? It's coming at the tarot from a very me place because I'm trying to use it to help me understand what I think, how I feel, how what I need to do. And journaling was a huge part of that. And I just journal, you know, artistically and I journal with words and all of that. But that's that was really how I started to make that personal connection was by just free writing around my readings. Yeah, this is what I, um... it, you know, like I said, journaling isn't my thing, but I just had a memory. Um, I do my morning readings. I take a picture and I put it on Instagram. That's how I journal. Mm -hmm. That's how I keep that's journaling. That's yeah. absolutely journaling. So that's how I journal. It's so yeah, it's just a different form of journaling. Yes. And I, I came to that realization a few months ago. What's mm -hmm. interesting uh, in that is that, um, and I like you, I like to make them look pretty and mm -hmm. have crystals and charms and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. However, I was going through um, uh, one of the readings that I had in the past because I wanted to show it to Steve. And I was scrolling and the ones that I liked the most are the ones that I have. I have a spiral notebook where I wrote my reading and I just put my, mm -hmm. my three cards on there. And aesthetically, I just think those are the prettiest ones. No crystals, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing big or spectacular. And I'm like, and I remember thinking, I really like doing this because uh, mm -hmm. it it just felt, I don't know, very grounded because I'm writing it out. It felt very, um, I don't know. I just, there was a sense of satisfaction in writing it out mm -hmm. that felt really more authentic than just- I was gonna say, authentic. And I, yeah, than typing it. Uh, Cause I type, you know, you write your little mm -hmm. blurb which yeah. will, and then so um i do see that there are benefits to doing it um yeah. when you read for yourself do you have long readings or short readings mine are pretty uh, it, depends, it depends on what i'm reading around generally short okay um, yeah mine you know, too three cards are my favorite you know maybe like five but like there's probably it's probably the majority is oracle um i definitely tend to do shorter readings unless i'm doing like real big picture things um or i'm doing something that's like i mean like the the path the lover's path that we did you know mm -hmm. that was seven cards that's that's a fairly decent size reading for me when i do my one shots though i don't those will just have many cards i feel like i need to get on the table but that's that's kind of it's it's a message in the moment but it's also tarot in play so it depends on what my intention is when i sit down so the, the re reason message, quick and dirty that's what i like <laughs> okay. so the reason i ask is do you ever take those long uh readings that you have and condense them into a journal entry yes yeah you do absolutely and yeah. those entries kind of help you remember that whole kind of uh reading that, that you have. Whole reading. yeah i also i also keep i keep a picture so i take a picture of every reading that i do it doesn't always go out publicly Mm -hmm. Actually, probably the majority of them don't go out publicly, but I keep a copy of them in in my photo, in my gallery. I have a picture of every reading I've done, and I keep that as also a visual reference because I'm a visual person. So I have will have notes in um, in a journal, and if I don't include visuals or card pulls with it, the actual because I put, like a lot of times I'll print off the cards and I'll paste them in there and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but if I don't do that, I always have a picture to reference. Because I think it's important to remember that like journaling, to me, that's still journaling, right? Even if I'm taking a picture and it's going in my phone and nobody's ever seeing it, but I'm making a little note about it, that's journaling. Yeah. And I okay. think the thing to remember is there's many different forms of journaling. There's artistic journaling like I do on pen and paper. There's digital journaling. Instagram is a form of journaling. YouTube is a form of journaling or very much can be. Sometimes my videos are journal entries. If it's a one shot, that's a journal entry, right? I just did a reading and I just went through the whole thing with you and that's a journal entry. And now I have a visual record of it as well. 
but there's lots of different ways that we can you know journal it's all just kind of in how we're the method that we're using to process the reading yeah. and my method depends on my mood sometimes i want to write a whole bunch and sometimes i just want to make a pretty picture around it sometimes i want to make a video so it's very much dependent on the context of the reading and then the kind of the really the creative space i'm in how do i feel like creatively expressing this reading processing because as a creative, a lot of my processing is creative. That's how I process. Yeah. I don't figure stuff out until I make something with it a lot of the time. Yeah, one of the things that I'll do when I have a reading and it's an important reading uh, or a reading that I really need to keep in mind uh, throughout the day, I will take a picture of it and then on my phone, I will make it my screen uh, saver because yeah. all I have to do is touch the screen and there it is. There it is, yeah. And then, and I've done that where I've had to go into an important meeting. You know, I'll, I'll look at that before I open the door, I'll settle with it, and then I'll walk in as a clear reminder of what the purpose is for me in that yeah. space. They, or mm -hmm. like if I have to have a, a heavy discussion with somebody that's gonna be uncomfortable, I go to my reading, I sit with it, and then I go and have yeah. that discussion. Yeah, I do, I do that a lot. I reference my photos a lot because I have so much going on in my little space that I'm working in, where I pull cards, you know, at, at any given point, I could have all kinds of video game stuff where I could have all kinds of glue and tape and stickers and like stuff that I don't necessarily want in contact with my cards or I don't have space for my cards. So I use my pictures a lot as references. I will do my reading, I will do my thing, I'll take my picture and then I'll put my cards away, but I still have that picture yeah. to, to reference. Yeah, I do the same thing. Now, when it comes to tarot tubers, other tarot tubers, um, mm -hmm. who are some of your favorites? Um, well, like it's, it's, most of my favorites are people who have become my friends, which yeah, is no, that makes really sense. amazing. That yeah, does make yeah. Sense. Um, I mean, one of my like OG favorites, Kelly, the Truth and Story, right? She oh my god! Let me tell you, when I need to go to my professor because I'm in a very educational, educational, analytical space. She mm -hmm. is the one I go to every time. Yep. I learn so much just from her walkthroughs. She's from amazing. her walkthroughs. Her walkthroughs are amazing. She, when I saw Kelly's walkthroughs, I was like, that's the type of walkthrough I want to watch because not only did I get to see the cards and I heard what the creator of the deck intended, I also got to hear Kelly's perspective. And for mm -hmm. me, that was that was huge. Getting to see someone else interpret the cards, just even in a walkthrough is amazing. So yeah, I love her channel. I mean, obviously Lisa, you know, she's mm -hmm. my best friend. So, um, you know, I love her channel. Um, Anybody new think, that you found that you're kind of liking right now? Um, I'm not really up on who's new in the community. Okay. Um, I, watch, <laughs> I watch Krista a lot. Krista's yeah. like my cozy. Yeah, this is my cozy tarot tube friend. I cozy up with her when, like, um, when I need that kind of thing. I'm trying to think who, like, I'm I'm the worst tarot tuber because I'm not like really up on the whole tarot community. Well, I I'm couldn't tell you who's popular right now. I couldn't tell you what tags are popular right now. <laughs> I haven't had much time to actually watch the tarot tube. <laughs> well, um, I'm horrible with names, people's names channel yeah. names, movie names, TV show. I'm horrible. Like we talked about yeah. Kelsey and I've known her for yeah. a while now, had her on my channel. We're doing a deck study and I couldn't remember her channel name. I'm horrible. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm terrible with channel names. Channel names are the worst because I'm like, I will know a person and I'll know them by like their name name. And I'm like, oh, but I can't, I don't know what your channel name is. Or I know I've watched your channel, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, I was like, I could, I could bring up my list. Who's on my list? Do we want to play that game? We probably shouldn't play that game. Let's not play that game of who's so on my list. So one, one, one of the <laughs> things that I really like to, uh, is new people who are brand new. I like love going to their channels. I'll, I'll, I'll subscribe. I will make comments, uh, because I remember when I first started and I've only been on, I'll be, it will be two years in August. Like mm -hmm. anytime co somebody commented or I got a subscriber, it was really exciting. Really you know? exciting. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. I, and I want to support these new people mm -hmm. that are coming on. So I'll get some new people yeah. on my tarot chats um, because I want to give them a platform and I want to learn about them. And, you know, it's a, it, because the learning curve can be really, really steep. 
You know? Yeah, and, and YouTube is not always a nice place. It's, no. it's not, it's just not, it's really not. So there's like, you gotta have boundaries around that kind of, kind of thing. I have, and I, and I think that, um, I do, I love checking out new tarot channels, but I do keep my watch list pretty curated, um, because I have very, very limited time yeah. <laughs> to, to watch, to watch YouTube. But also, um, because I try to, I try to keep in mind that everything that I am taking in it does affect me, right? So um, I tend to like if I tend to stay away from channels who get like really really ranty about things because that's just not a vibe I want in my tarot space and things like that. Um, so no, I'm not always up on the, the the new people. It's usually somebody has to tell me, "Hey, did you see this person?" And then I'm like, "Absolutely, I will go watch. I will subscribe. I will comment." Other than that, like, if you don't tell me, though, I'm, like, clueless. And half the time, because I realized, Lisa was like, did you see Kelly's new video? And I'm like, Kelly posted a video? I didn't see a video. How come I didn't see a video? Because I'm on the other channel. And that's, I, I run into that problem a lot, where I'm on my I'm on my Wong channel, so I don't see, <laughs> I'm seeing video game stuff, not tarot stuff. There is a brand new person that I've been enjoying. She's like, she has maybe five videos. I'm going to see if I can find her real quick. Um, I think I was her first subscriber, which for me oh, was that exciting. That I was her first subscriber. Um, that's really exciting. You know, it's fun. You know, I'm your first. Yeah. Uh, and her videos are stunning. She has an Instagram page, and I'm just mm -hmm. really impressed with her production value. It's really high quality. Uh, it's Blushing Rose Tarot. She's amazing. I have seen that channel. I've watched a few of her videos. Yeah, so she eventually... Now that you said it, now that you said it, I remember it. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, I love seeing brand new people, and um, mm -hmm. I make myself available to, uh, for brand new people because I've had people do the same thing for me, which is really nice, mm -hmm. like yourself and Lisa. And, like, Lisa was my first tarot chat uh, guest. And let me tell yeah. you... Uh, not knowing who I am or, you know, what my channel was about for her to, you know, take a, I think it's a leap of faith mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. like, gave me the confidence to continue and ask people, which has been phenomenal. I've met some amazing yeah. people. I've made some really good friends uh, by doing mm -hmm. this. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, the Facebook uh, page. Yes. So what was the decision in, um, you know, handing that off for you? Because you had that um, for a while and you really like built that community yeah. up. Yeah, it was, um, I, I think the Facebook group came pretty shortly after I started my channel um, because I wanted a space to be able to like share spreads and talk about spreads and, and decks and things like that. Something that was a bit more, um, you know, in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of having conversations with people. And I was also making a lot of spreads at that time. So I was just sharing them all there. And um, I, I just realized that over time, as I added, you know, as I added a membership and then that had its own Facebook group and then we moved to Discord and that got even bigger. And then we're doing all of this other stuff. I just felt like I wasn't, for one, I wasn't on the Facebook platform very often anymore because most of the stuff that I was doing um, besides my friends that I still insist on doing Facebook Messenger and I cannot get them over to Discord, but that's fine. <laughs> um, I, I just wasn't on the platform as much and I started like feeling like I wasn't paying enough, like enough attention, right? It wasn't, I wasn't giving the group the attention it needed. Too much time was going by when I was, re you know, responding to things and it just felt like it wasn't, it wasn't fair. It wasn't fair to the people who've been there and that have, you know, supported me in that space and it was it was a difficult decision because that that was the last boho tarot thing mm -hmm. that was it that was the last thing that had that name on it and i was like okay that officially means that this era of my life is really is is over it's trans i've transitioned from that into this which is great i mean it's where i want to be going and i've got huge huge plans in the works um, relating to all that stuff, but it was the last thing. And I was like, I, and I agonized for a year. I've been talking about yeah. finding 
I didn't. Yeah, so that. it's my friends and stuff. Yeah, I was like, okay, should I do it? Like, should I? Just, I need to find someone else to take it over. It's not like I'm not giving it the attention it deserves. It's not for the people in the group. Um, and I mean, it's a great group of people, but I was, I just felt like I wasn't being as present as I should have been. And that's that's like my one thing. I want to show up. If I'm going to be here, I want to show up. If I'm going to be in a space, I want to show up for that space and for the people who are in that space. And I wasn't showing up for them. And I had to admit to myself that I wasn't showing up in the way that I thought I needed to in that space. So I wanted to find somebody who would, but I agonized about it. And I talked about it for over a year with my friends. <laughs> so I was like, I need, I need to find, I, I need to find somewhere else for it to, to go. Someone who's going to take it and grow it further and give, you know, everybody in that group what they've, you know, what they deserve to get out of a group. I was always over in discord and, and in that space and in YouTube space and all of that. And so it just felt like I, it was time for me to, to pass that off and move on so that really, so that that group could get what it needed. Cause it wasn't getting what it needed for me. And, and so know, sometimes that's hard to admit, but you know, so we ended up, so, you know, I ended up, you handed it off to me and you changed the name. Was that like mm -hmm. a big, uh, it was a big I, moment. I was like, yeah. I did it. I did it. It's done. But it, it felt good though. It felt good because, um, like we, and I had several people who had, who had reached out to me, um, about taking over the group. And it's like, it took me, it took me several weeks to really decide on someone because I was like trying to think about what the group had meant, um, what, what that person's vision was for the group and where they wanted to take it from there. And when you and I started talking, I was like, I think this, this, I, I, and I told, I remember talking to Lisa about it. I was like, I think this feels, and Lisa's like, it's perfect decision. It's perfect. <laughs> He's a perfect choice. And I was like, okay, Lisa says it's good. So I'm good. <laughs> That's sweet. Um, yeah. Cause yeah. I was very apprehensive. Cause I knew that if I did this, it would be something I would have to take seriously, be really be invested in. But one thing I, I really love doing is building community. That's just a really big thing for me. And I started thinking, how do I do that? It's on Facebook. And I responded kind of late. It was like three, four weeks it, after. I, I used to yeah. for somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and so I said, how can I create community in there? And then I came up with some ideas. And so I've already implemented one, which is getting, so we got a new banner and every week we're going to have a brand new full card that is nominated by a member in the group. So they get to, see, and their name will be on there. The name of the deck will be right. on there. So they get to see themselves, you know, mm -hmm. represented through the full card on, on there. So yeah. I thought that was kind of, yeah, yeah, that got a good response great. for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, having a space to do, to do fun stuff like that is, is amazing. And I, I think it's, I think it was the, I think it was the right choice for sure. Like, and I've, the feedback that I've personally gotten from people are like, Benny was a great choice. And I was like, oh, perfect. Thank you. I yeah, I've got, it got, it's been very nice. People have been very, very sweet. So, so I'm very grateful group. for the opportunity. Yeah. I love that group. It's, it's, I, I, that, I mean, I'm on that group all the time. I'm reading people's comments. Now I can respond a little bit more, you know, so it's, mm -hmm. but it's also trying to figure out how do I keep its core the same make it my own and mm -hmm. not make it, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I, I just want to keep it in a space where it feels clean and crisp and safe. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want people to come in and try to sell their stuff and try yeah, to that's... promote their stores yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Cause then it becomes mm -hmm. something completely different. Yeah, I had a pretty, pretty strict policy of if I saw a promotional post, they got me or a mod, they they got deleted because that was not that's not what that space is for. It's community. It's not a sales platform. And I really didn't I, I did never want the group to to be that. And I would get people they come in and they'd like post their about a deck. And I'm like, I'd look like you're the deck creator. You've never posted in this group before. You just joined. And here you are hawking your wares over it. Nope, you're out. You're out of here. <laughs> like, be a part of the community if you're going to be here. So I had a lot of tough, tough love going with that group of, you know, if you, if you weren't there for the right reasons, then you weren't yeah. sticking around. But I have two administrators now, Kelsey from Huggy Tarot and Lisa from Mythical mm -hmm. uh, Witchery. Uh, okay. Lisa yeah. is really good at all the back end stuff. She's amazing. She knows what she's she looking amazing. for. And when somebody like um, 
she will actually uh, look at the answers to what people say. I'll look at them and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll mm -hmm. discuss yes or no. And we've had to say a few no's sometimes, which does, yeah. is a little icky, but it's because I'm not yeah. just used to that. It happens sometimes though, yeah. yeah, I've, yeah. I've, already, I've already banned somebody, which I didn't want to do, but they violated something really bad. So I was like, no, mm -hmm. I, I can't trust you. Yeah. So it's yeah. going to be an interesting journey as well, that space. Yeah. It's, it's a great space and the people there are great and everybody's so supportive. And I feel like part of that, that group uh, along with, you know, all, all of my subscribers and people who watch my YouTube channel, like that has really gotten me to where I am today. It's like, it's their support. And they always say, that's why I show up when it gets hard, when the hours get really, really long. Like I was working till 1130 last night. Like I went and had dinner with my husband and then came back and went back to work. And, you know, I work seven days a week and it's, it's a lot, but that all the people in the community, that's why, that's why I keep doing it. That's why I keep showing up because it's like to be able to be a part of that. Like I feel really blessed to be able to be a part of that. Let me tell you, I am so happy that you've been able to make this a career. I think that's amazing. I love that for you. It's it's a it's a weird thing. I made like a little clippy video or whatever a couple weeks ago. I was like, what what? When I try to explain to people what I do in a day, it's. I think I did a little like I don't know if it was an Instagram short or whatever. Like I love making videos, so I make fun videos all the time. I make fun videos for my friends too. It's like my love language. But um, uh, I, yeah, it was like trying to explain to people what I do now is so interesting. I ended up. I don't know if you know this or not. Do you know um, what your most popular video is? Um. It. I'm not testing used, you. I'm not trying to test you. I promise. It used to be, it used to be, um, I don't know if it still is, but the last time I looked, which I'll be honest, was like a couple years ago. It was the one about how I study a tarot deck. It's still number one. You have 71,000 views on that video. <laughs> I'm like, oh my crazy. gosh. That's, That's crazy. crazy. And then oh your tarot deck collection. And then uh, how I start my Second. morning. So mm -hmm. those, uh, those, those are great. I, I was like, wow, that's, a, that's amazing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's still, and, and that's the one that I think is, is so interesting because like I did a book around that and then I redid the book around that and it's the one that kind of keeps resurfacing. I've never redone the video though. I mean, that might be an interesting thing to do, but I just keep updating the link with, oh, here's the latest version of what I've created around that idea. <laughs> Well, Dawn, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. This was a wonderful conversation. And just get to know your history a little better. Uh, it's one of the things that I really look forward in learning. And you taught me a lot today. Oh, okay. this is me babbling. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, until next time, everybody, my name is Benny. This is Dawn. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.